Hi, welcome to episode 41 of the Stress Sense Podcast. I'm Stacy, also known as Stacy Elston on Instagram and Stress Sense on Ravelry. You can find show notes on our Ravelry group, hopefully, if I remember to do them, um, which is just Stress Sense in the podcast tab of Ravelry, the podcast tab, the groups tab of Ravelry. Um, yeah, so <laughs> this is, uh, today is March 29th, 2017. I just got back from work. A little tired. Um, it is hot outside, so I'm in a t-shirt, which feels weird because I don't t-shirt often. Um, yeah, so I have a relatively short episode, I think. Um, I have some finished objects, a half-finished object, and some whips. Um, I do have stuff that I'm planning on knitting, but I don't, I don't know. I don't think it's necessary because it's all socks. And it's all stuff you've seen before. So, um, with that, I will jump into the show. Um, I am drinking my handy dandy Starbucks double shot on ice. No classic. Two white mocha. Actually, one and a half white mocha. Um, and not fat milk the perfect 70 degree day drink after you get off a shift that was incredibly slow and boring. So that is my life and my mind is a little like Wah! because it's just how it goes after work. Anyway, I have some finished objects. So the first I have, I finished these a while ago. By a while ago, I mean almost a year ago. But I finally got them back. Um, I was a test knitter for Kemper of um, Junk Yarn Yarn and Designs and the podcast when she did her Pixel Rack Socks. I was a test knitter. Um, and when I took a picture of them, she asked if I could send them to her so that they could be the sample. So I did. And um, yeah, so I got them back the other day. And so here are my Pixel Rack Socks. I never got to show them on the podcast. So here they are in all their glory. I love them so much. I'm incredibly proud of these. These are my first color work socks. They're a little wonky because I suck at afterthought heels. And I knit these um, toe up, which is not, it's not my favorite at all. Um, but yeah, so that was my first venture into color work knitting. Obviously it's a little wonky here, um, but I, I really love them. I love the yarns I used, which I'm going to go over real quick, um, just because I am really happy with all of the yarns that I used, and because I never got to talk about them on the podcast. So the Contrast Heel Toe and Cuff are Madeline Tosh Twist Light in the Astrid Gray colorway, and then we have Hedgehog Fibers in Mint Julep, um, a one-of-a-kind spun right round. Baron Vola and Sakura, Vola and Vine Yarns in Solstice, a mini from a friend, um, Fawn and the Fox Terrarium, O Loops Hermione's Handbag, Junk Yarn in Frida Colo, Hedgehog Fibers in Fool's Gold, another mini from a friend, uh, my favorite yarn of all time, Junk Yarn, Sylvia, Hedgehog Fibers, Soda Pop, another mini from a friend, Full and Vine Yarns, Pablo the Blowfish, and Jinx Yarn in Unsafe for Swimming. So that is it. Um, yeah, so this is all I really have to say about Pixel Rye Socks. If you haven't knit these yet, you should. They're a fun, quick project. Um, I'm finding all the little mistakes that I made with my color work because it was my first color work pattern. Like, I don't, I didn't know what I was doing, but, um... Yeah, so those are my Pixel Rye Socks by Kemper Ray. I love them. Highly, highly recommend the pattern. I'm really happy to have them back in my sock drawer. So, um, the second finished object. It's a long time coming. I'm going to put them on the blockers even though they don't fit. Because I wear a size um, women's 5.5 US. And Doug wears a size US men's 10.5 
gosh, these look ridiculous. Okay, it's fine. Um, I think it just gives it a better knocking everything over. Um, I just think it gives it a better way to look at the sock. On sock walkers, I should probably just get a pair for his size feet because I knit him a lot of socks. But I finished his unaware socks. So this is Stress Knits yarn in the unaware colorway, which is a colorway Doug dyes for the shop. Um, I've dyed it the last few times, but this was the very first skein of it. It is on our smooth sock base, which is a 75% superwash merino, 10%, no, that's not right, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. I'm falling more and more in love with 75-25s. He has an incredible knack for color. Um, these are based off the 1975's latest album. So, yeah, his unaware socks, again, same contrast heel color. It's Astrid Gray, Madeline Tosh, Ta Twist Light. Yeah, so there are those. Um, just my basic sock pattern for him. I use 64 stitches for him. Sometimes I do the cup in 72, but usually. Mm. Yes, yeah, so they're massive compared to my little feet, but... Yeah, so those are finally done. Now that I have shown them on the podcast, he can finally wear them. He is incredibly excited about these. So there is that. And then I have a half-finished object, which is my Outlander sock. So I started this on Mine and Doug's honeymoon in New York for the plane ride and all that jazz. And yeah, so... There is that. It's Volan Vine Yarns in the Blitz base, um, which is her Stellina base. And it's the Outlander colorway, the infamous Outlander colorway. I love them. Um, it was, this was my first skein of Indie Dye Yarn, not this particular skein, but Outlander by Volan Vine. And so it's kind of nice to have another pair in the stash that actually fits. And it looks different than it used to, but I still really love this. So there is my hoe. So <laughs> there's that. Um, I do have the second Outlander sock on the needles, which is in my bento bag from Fringe Supply Company, which I love. Highly recommend these bags. Um, super, super cute. But yeah, I knit... here. So I've done the cuff and most of the leg because I did a really short leg on these socks for me. And then I have my little pug loaf stitch marker from Super Secret Miniatures. There's the cake. This is gorgeous. I really love knitting on the sock. It is my church knitting right now. So those will hopefully be done and be my second pair for my box of socks because I'm trying to catch up. I'm very, very, I feel very behind, but um, Candace of Pin Feathers and Pearls also <laughs> is around the same spot that I am, so that made me feel way better. <laughs> okay, so I have two whips. Um, one you've seen before, so I'll show you that first. Living in my favorite bag of all time, it's from Laura of the Fawn and the Fox. It is a rifle paper company bag fabric bag with this gorgeous peachy pink lining. It's my crochet blanket. So this is my granny stripe blanket. I, yeah, I did finish a row. So it's in the cute little sushi roll. It has grown significantly since you last saw it. Um, I will say that there is a spoiler in this blanket. So if you are part of my, um, coming home yarn club um I would skip forward a few minutes because I put it in this blanket because I'm obsessed with the colorway so I'd skip forward about three four minutes because I'm gonna talk about it for a little bit okay you ready so here is my blanket again it's a very large blanket it's about It's like an arm span and a half, um, which is crazy because that means it's smaller than my Find Your Fade. 
But um, last time you saw it, I added in, at least I think I showed this one, but um, I have my super, super miniature iced coffee, iced latte stitch marker. I added in um, Fairy Hair by Volan Vine. And then I added everything underneath this. So we have um, Sweet Dreams by Volan Vine. Um, Milky Way by Skein, Fred and George by Nora George Yarns, um, then we have Ariel by Junk Yarn here, um, Blazing Sevens by Lolo Did It, um, But It Could Kill You, Once Upon a Corgi, and then the last one is the Club Colorway I Died, which is called City Magic. That's what it is. Um, I have the mini right here. I dyed it. Um, I got minis in for the shop. I'll talk about it later, but I dyed myself one um, of this color. It's just this beautiful... I'm, I'm obsessed with this color. This will be a regular in the shop. Um, but yeah, so it's my Grady Stripe so far. I'm in love with it. Um, yeah, it's just, I can't wait to have this. Done. It's just, um, I've been really craving my blankets, so hopefully I will be getting more work done on them soon. So there's that. The second whip is a little bit of a one-knitting attack, a wah-wah, if you will. Um, so, I mentioned on my Instagram that I have some exciting family news. I wanted to wait till it was all over to share it. Uh, my sister-in-law, Stacy funny enough, um, had a baby. So, um, it is Doug's sister and her husband David, uh, welcomed a baby girl, um, last night actually. So, I decided I wanted to knit the baby a flax light sweater. I started it, <laughs> but, um, as you can see it's off the needles. I separated for the sleeves, and then I realized that there's something really wonky about one of them. I think it's that one. Mm, yeah, so I apparently stopped increasing on one of the sleeves. So not only was the sleeve not right in the raglan increases, um, it was off by about 12 stitches. So I'm knitting the Flax Light Sweater by Tin Can Knits. Um, I knit this in literally like, this is three hours of work. It was nothing. So I'm not really peeved about it. I just, I got really mad at it and like threw it down and ripped it off the needles. I'm gonna take the progress keeper out of it though. Um, so I put it in timeout last night. I think I'm gonna start it over again tonight or tomorrow. Um, but yeah, so Flax Light, I am using a skein, my wonderful friend Kayla from the Three Jewels Knits, I think that's what it's called. Oh, Kayla, forgive me if that's wrong. I think it's Three Jewels Knits podcast here on YouTube, but you should check her out if you haven't yet. She's wonderful. Um, for getting married, she sent me two skeins of the Fawn and the Fox yarn. Um, one was the Let's Stay Home colorway, which I adore. And then this is the Nazgul colorway on the Badger base, which is her BFL nylon. I think this is the old one. Um, no, this isn't her Badger Base. Yeah, this is when it was just, um, here's her old label on the Fox. This is BFL Sock, 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 425 yards, and the Nazgul colorway, which I think is one that her husband Michael dies. So there's that. Um, yeah, so they are very Irish, so doing a nice, beautiful green. It's just so sad. Um, I love the way this is knitting up. It's super squishy and it's not the softest thing in the world, but it's not scratchy. I would wear this as a garment, so I feel like it's okay for a baby. Um, yeah, so I also have in this bag um, my life-saving Lush Lemon Flutter Cuticle Butter. If you... One, it smells like lemon, which is amazing. Two, it saves my cuticles so much. So if you 
have dry cuticles from knitting or like dishes and try the stuff because it's magic. There's that tip. Um, it's living in my fringe supply bag. So that's that project. It'll be better soon, hopefully. Um, hopefully I'll be able to show you a finished sweater next week. Okay, so next we have stash enhancement, which I was not expecting to do, but there are some skeins that I just couldn't say no to and they had to come live with me. Um, one is a spoiler because it is the second installment of the Woolen Vine Yarns Yarn Club. So if you haven't seen it yet, I'm gonna show it first, just get out of the way. So I'm gonna show it in three, two, one, bam. So I, admitting, admittedly, purple is not really my color. Um, but the more that I look at this, okay. That's so much better. Um, so is the Gatekeeper colorway on her Blitz base because that is what I purchased. I'm going to take this apart because the colors in here are ridiculous. So, yeah. This is gorgeous, Kristen. If you're watching, I love it. I love this little pop of like sea green. I'm obsessed with it. I can't wait to make it. A beautiful pair of socks or maybe a baby sweater because I'm feeling all the baby knits because um, I have two nieces now so that's really exciting um, yeah so there is that one I don't know I'm rescaling this on <laughs> it actually wasn't that bad um, I also love that like her Venus flytrap colorway kind of is kind of through here and just these beautiful the color is not doing justice in here but this is gorgeous. I am super, super excited about it. So that's stash enhancement number one. Um, next, so when I got my Pixel Rye socks, I was I ordered um, a skein of Ariel from Junk Yarn. So here is that. And Kemper also threw in three minis for me. So these are gorgeous, and I love them so so much. Um, yeah, this is a colorway of hers that I've been obsessed with for a really long time. Yeah, I'm thinking about putting it with the Blazing Sevens, which is right here. So I think that is going to be my pair of socks, and I'm super excited about it. That stash enhancement. Um, next, <laughs> I've been wanting to purchase from this person for a really long time because she's a wonderful human being. Um, I'm sad I didn't get to meet her at Vogue Knitting Live, but, um, gosh, why am I blanking on her name? Gabby of Once Upon a Corgi, um, released her first installment or like the first section of her series of unfortunate events, Yarn Club. And the third book is my favorite, The Rear Window. Um, that was my favorite as a kid. So, I had to purchase, but it could kill you. That's how I always heard her saying it in my head, and the fact, I think it was Viola Davis who played her. It was great. If you haven't watched the series on Netflix, it's amazing. Oh, sorry. So, just apologize to my coffee. I'm good. I promise I'm okay. So it's just this beautiful, like there's pinks, and it's this beautiful off-white beige color and there's like hints of the mint and there's like some periwinkle I think this is going to be my pair of mercury socks I think it's going to be gorgeous so stay tuned for that because I really want to guess this on like right now so there's that um and then <sighs> Sue and Chelsea I should just give them my paycheck because their colorways are absolutely gorgeous, and um, they're the reason Doug and I binge watched Bates Motel. So, um, when they came out with the Bates Motel colorways, I could not not get one. So I had to get the one after my favorite character, Norma Louise, because she's crazy and I love her. She's the best. So Legacy Fiber Arts. I think this is my third... Maybe my fourth skein of their yarn. The third skein that I've purchased. 
fourth skein that I have because they were beautiful and gave me a skein at Vogue Knitting Live. But this is so Norma Bates. I love it. I got it on their Snazzy Toes, which is their silver Stellina base. And I love it. I love it so much. This is also another pair that I'm dying to cast on. So Norma Louise, Legacy Fiber Arts. And then, um, last but certainly not least, this is another dyer that I've wanted to order from for quite a little bit. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I don't know how to pronounce this. I think it's Machete Shop? Machete Shop? I don't think it's Machete Shop though. I don't know. But <laughs> I purchased a skein of Sweet Nectar on her Simple Sock base, which is a 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. So, her shop, I think it's a her, um, Sweet Nectar. She posted this picture on Instagram, and I knew immediately I had to have it. It's gorgeous. It's the blushy, peachy pink that I love with these shots of chartreuse and purple and blue, and I just... I can't wait to knit all of these up. So, that is Stash Enhancement. I should not have any for a while. I have a few things coming, but I'll show them when I get to the when I get them. Um, yeah. So next, I'm going to move into stress knits. Um, so if you are not interested in my shop or any of the updates, um, thank you so much for hanging out with me. And if you are interested, let's get into it. So I have a few really exciting things. One is I have new labels, which is one of the reasons the um, pre-orders have not gone out. I am currently packing up orders. I took a break to podcast, um, and then I'm going to go back to it while it's uploading. So they should go out tomorrow, Thursday, the 30th of March. So thank you, thank you, thank you all for your patience. I really appreciate it. I am over the moon excited to get these out of <laughs> our apartment. Um, yeah, so there is that. So without further ado, I'm going to show you my new labels, which I am obsessed with. Doug designed them. I love them so, so much. This is on a skein of my Sweet Disposition colorway on the Sparkle Base, which is my favorite colorway that I dye. Um, so there's that. But there's the new label. I love it so so much. It is exactly what I wanted. It's simple and I love it so much. So most of you who have pre-ordered will be getting these and anybody that makes an order from now on will be getting this label. So I'm super super excited about that. Um, next I wanted to show you guys my March color of the month because I'm going to be putting up April color of the month pre-orders. Um, what is today? Wednesday? I don't know where I'm going to put them up. Probably tomorrow um, around 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I know it's not the most convenient thing in the world, but um, they tend to stick around. So if you want it, you should be able to get it. Um, and yeah, so it should be good. Um, so I did a new technique for the March color of the month. Something I've wanted to try for a really long time. I've seen a few colorways like this. I balled it up because I kept the skein that was like super, super tangled. Um, so that's why it's all balled up. My cable needle is on. Needle. So here it is in a ball. I'll show you it in skein in a second. Um, this is called Mom's Flower Bed. Um, and it's based off of my mom's flower bed. So um, I'm knitting her a pair of socks <laughs> in this colorway because how can I have a colorway based off of her and not do that? So I'm only on the ribbing. Actually, I finished the ribbing. They're going to be a pair of shorty socks. Um, so you can't really tell, but it stripe, micro stripes um, with this beautiful green and the colors. That are speckled in there. So I'm really really excited with how this came out. Um, 
show you it in a scheme. This is going out with a pre-order today. So that's what it looks like in the skein. This will be a regular, um, I'll probably start dyeing it late April, early May. Actually, I might release it for my mom's birthday in May. So this will be coming to the shop. If you're interested, look for more colorways like this. Um, also this gray, not this gray, this green in the tonal because I'm obsessed with it. There's that. Um, I talked about pre-orders and then next I am going to talk about some new things coming to the shop. So first off, I have minis coming to the shop. They are 20 gram minis, um, both on Sparkle and on Smooth. Those will be in my signature colorways. So stuff like Sweet Disposition, Solstice, Bell Jar, um, what about I Smell Snow, stuff like that. Um, so those will be going out rolling out. Um, I'm also going to start playing around with tonals. So like that green in my mom's mo mom's flower bed colorway will be a tonal just to get some options for heels, toes, and cuffs. And you know if you want to make a shawl, some contrast colors to go with because I really only have speckled colorways. So I really just want to give a more more of a variety in my shop. So that's going to be coming up. Um, so those will be on the minis. And once I perfect them on the minis, I'm going to start dyeing them in full skeins. Um, each mini is going to be sold individually. Um, I also might have a build your own mini set. Um, so stay tuned for that. What else is going on? I'm also rolling out a BFL sock face because I love BFL. Do I have it over here? I do. Let me grab it. I mean, not like you can tell from this, but it is a 75% Superwash BFL and 25% nylon. Um, I think this is going to be my sturdy sock. I'm not sure, but I love it. It's very... It's sturdy. It's... It feels like my smooth sock base, but with a little bit more of a tooth to it, and I don't know how much you're going to be able to see. But, yeah, so I love this. Um, I can't wait to see how dye, uh, how it takes dye. So that should be really interesting. Um, and then, another thing that I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start opening, um, not opening, I'm going to start listing mystery skeins. Um, I love this idea. A lot of a few dyers do this, and it's skeins that are slightly off, um, you know, pre pre colorways. Um, when I'm trying to get my groove, because I don't really want to sell them at full price because it's not what it turns out to be, or it's something that I'm not going to completely sell, or like that I want to repeat. But I also I don't know. Um, I don't want to call it an impulse skein. Um, not because it's ugly, because I wouldn't sell anything that I wouldn't buy myself. So I just want to put that out there. It's not going to be an ugly skein of yarn. It might be a base I've tried that I don't like, which there will be some of that. Um, colorways that just didn't work out and they're beautiful, but I just don't want to list them in my shop. Um, at full price. <laughs> so mystery skeins. So you'll be getting a random color on a random base for $22. I'm gonna write that down so I don't forget. Um, um, yeah, so it's a nice economical way to get some indie dyed yarn, but at the same time um, it's fun and kind of like a club, but not um, cause there's that mystery involved. So you might be able, you might get my squishy sock base, which is my merino nylon cashmere, which is usually $30 and you might get it for 22 It's cheaper than all of them. Um, cause the least expensive, I like that better than cheap. <laughs> the least expensive base I have is my favorite sock base and my smooth sock base. They're the same price. Um, and those are 26, 25, 26. So, 
yeah, so that's a nice way to kind of ease pocket strings a little bit um, and a way for me to um, roll out some of the skeins that I have kind of stockpiled because I just don't know what to do with them. Um, so right now behind me I have a skein on a base that I'm never going to sell in the store because I just I don't like it. Um, it's not that like I don't like it but I I have pretty sensitive skin and it just it bothers me and I would never knit on it so I don't want to sell it if that makes sense. Um, it's not itchy. Other people carry this base. It's been a very very popular base in other stores um, and other shops but it's just not for me. It's like, that's behind me. <laughs> um, what else is behind me? I also have the first round of, um, my first attempt at the, um, the second installment of my Coming Home Yarn Club. It just didn't work out. <sighs> so, yeah. So there's that. Um, I just realized I didn't talk about something, but about next time it's a giveaway um, I'll do it next time but yeah so minis coming BFL coming new colorways coming that I'm super super excited about um there's certain places that I've seen certain dyes come together and it makes really cool colors and I'm really excited to play around with that so that's coming um, pre-orders going out tomorrow thank you for your patience um, and the Last installment of the Coming Home Yarn Club, I'm actually dying, not tomorrow, um, Friday, because I have a long weekend. So, um, with that, thank you so much to all the people who have come back to watch me and spend time with me. Thank you if you are new to this podcast. Thank you for supporting my shop and me in general, and I just, I love all of you so much, and I will talk to you next week. Bye.